Hello everyone, my name is Scarlett Westbrook and I'm an 18 year old climate justice activist and journalist. I've <laughs> I've spent the last five years of my life finding myself at the forefront of climate advocacy on the global stage, being a leading organiser of the school climate strikes in the UK and across Europe, and also becoming the youngest policy writer in parliamentary history. Writing for... Thank you. Writing bills aiming to bring us further towards climate justice. I first learned about climate change when I was about six years old. Our science teacher, Mrs. Fogg, was incredibly passionate about her subject. And so she took on a task most wouldn't dare to do, teach a class of six and seven year olds about the greatest crisis we've ever faced. That lesson really clicked things into place for me. Being Kashmiri, I knew about the impacts of flooding and natural disasters but I had never considered that there was a reason behind them other than chance, much less that the reason could be people. I continued learning about all things to do with climate that I could get my hands on, but being, you know, six, seven, eight years old, there wasn't much that I could do apart from recycle or join the eco clubs at school. I didn't really know how to do anything else. I suppose I got lucky that the pieces clicked into place for me as early as they did. The fact that the climate crisis is something that's human driven. I know that's not the case for most people and I can't blame them. How can you worry about global warming when you can't put food on the table? Why does the fact that polar bears going extinct matter when you've just lost your job? Where would you even find the time to go on a protest? Why should you care? There's basically nothing to, you can do to turn it around, right? I get it. The way most of us have been taught about climate change will have been through sterilized, detached geography lessons, where a bored teacher drones on about greenhouse, greenhouse gases and radiation with no real explanation of how the phenomenon will affect us as people. I can remember teachers drilling into us our responsibility to lower our carbon footprint, which is actually a phenomenon that was popularized by leading polluter British Petroleum. I wonder why they'd want us to think that the climate crisis is our fault instead of theirs. So, this rewrites history. It prioritizes things like our individual responsibility over the responsibility of governments and corporations to act it forces us to subconsciously possess guilt that should not be ours. If we'd gone vegan or had less hot showers, we wouldn't be in this position, right? The ghost of this perceived individual responsibility seems to haunt our society. By the time most of us have learned about the climate crisis, we've spent years absorbing blame as individuals. This narrative tells us that our individual actions are to blame for the climate crisis. And people respond to this how they respond to most things they're scared of, by hiding from it. It's time to change that, and this is how I try to do that. When I was nine years old, it was 2014, the year before the general election in the UK and the Paris Convention. Our class was set a homework piece to read the news, and that changed my life. The news was full of information about what different politicians would do at the Paris Convention if they were elected. I hadn't realized that politicians had the power to change things. I thought that climate change was this inevitable force we had absolutely no power over. But through reading the news and learning about this stuff, I found out that couldn't be further from the truth. World leaders could act and save us from the climate crisis. They were just choosing not to. So I knew we had to put more pressure on them to force them to act for our futures. So at 10 years old, after many arguments with my parents, I convinced them to let me knock on the doors of people to tell them to vote for the political parties that I thought would be the best for our environment. On the doorstep canvassing, I got lots of people asking me why my opinion held any value as not only a 10 year old, but as someone with no real life or academic experience. So I did what looking back is quite weird and decided to sit the exam you take at 18 in England at 13 in politics, specializing in climate and education policy. 
A few months later, now that I had this academic base I could pull back on when people said to me, what do you know? I decided to found the Climate Strikes, or be one of the founding organizers of the Climate Strikes in the UK, a protest movement where young people from across the country came together on Fridays, not attending school, um, to march outside governmental and council leadership organizations to demand action on the climate crisis. The politicians inside had essentially condemned our futures, and we couldn't let that slide. Neither could the 350,000 people who joined us at our strike on September 20th, 2019. We were people from all walks of life who came together to protect something that we all had in common, the earth that we live on. Race, religion, social class, education, age, didn't change the fact that we all shared the same earth and that we all must fight for it. This led to the UK becoming the first country to declare a national climate emergency and many local councils to establish 2030 decarbonisation targets in line with the IPCC recommendations. But we quickly found that shouting outside Parliament wasn't enough to get the change we needed at the scale and speed we needed. So we had to get inside. In 2020, I became the youngest parliamentary policy writer in history with the Climate Education Bill, a student-led bill to centre the education system around the climate crisis. School is meant to prepare us for the future, but that's not currently happening. We need to build a resilient society that can deal with all of the now inevitable impacts of the climate crisis, given that we're failing to meet decarbonisation targets. That means ensuring the next generation of workers are equipped with all of the knowledge, skills, and resources necessary to do that. When I was at school, which was only a few months ago, the only question I had about climate change in any of my exams was, list the benefits of climate change, eight marks. That was it. There was no nuance, no, what are the pros and cons? just the pros, and I think that fundamentally shows what is wrong with not only the British education system, but so many education systems across the world. One of the root causes of climate anxiety, which we're seeing as a growing phenomenon, is that people don't learn about climate change. They're not taught about it unless they take optional subjects like science or geography, but not only those who are scientists and geographers are going to be impacted by the climate crisis. Everyone, whether you're a builder or a banker, a farmer or a pharmacist, is going to be impacted by the climate crisis. So we all need to be taught about it. So many new jobs are going to be created that people don't even know about yet because we're simply not talking enough about climate change. There are going to be positions for environmental researchers, people who work on natural disaster risk, people who figure out what kind of climate resilience measures and technology we need. There's going to be more construction-related jobs as we build climate resilience technology, insulate homes and build flood prevention strategies. All of these jobs are going to be created in both vocational and academic streams, yet many people don't know they exist, so they won't end up being filled. To try and make that happen, I teamed up with Member of Parliament Nadia Whittam, he's the youngest MP in the UK, to write a law after school and try and get it passed through Parliament. Some parts of it have already been put into place. So from 2023, climate education is going to be introduced into primary schools for the first time. And we're beginning to phase out gas boilers with green energy pods. But we're trying to do much more and the bill has actually passed its first reading in parliament and is going back in this year. So hopefully in the next year or so, we'll see more changes to the British education system as a result of that work. Now, being a climate activist, I often get a lot of, oh yeah, I can see why all that climate stuff is important, but I'm just not really into nature, so I couldn't do it myself. Me too. I'm also not really into nature. I'm from Birmingham, if you couldn't tell from my accent and the talking too fast, the second biggest city in the UK. We're known for Cadbury's chocolate, Peaky Blinders, and our accents 
voted the worst in the UK, which I don't think is true. Hopefully you agree with me. We're the most landlocked city in the country, so we're the furthest away from any ocean or big water body. And for most of us, the closest we have to the great outdoors is the local park, somewhere you only really go to if you're interested in a certain kind of botany that David Attenborough wouldn't approve of. Growing up, I spent my time at chlorinated swimming pools and artificial ice rinks instead of on hikes at natural parks or caving like most of my activist peers. I'm allergic to grass and lots of insects and I've got a dodgy leg, so hiking and camping are basically hell to me. The closest I've ever really come to being in love with nature and the outdoors is when I'm by the sea. Um, which even I can't bring myself to dislike. You're probably wondering why I'm droning on about hating the outdoors so much and why I've dedicated my life to protecting something that I obviously don't like. I'll try and explain. The answer is multifaceted. Climate change is not only a pressing ecological issue, but a political and ethical labyrinth. It's not just about nature, and even if it was, I don't think that something should be destroyed for everyone just because I personally don't particularly like it. No, climate justice is about being brave and radically imaginative. It's about thinking that we deserve to live in a world that meets our needs and is habitable. I don't think that's much to ask at all. Whilst the climate crisis brings with it disaster, it also brings opportunity. The world, as we know, is kind of falling apart. So this is our chance to build towards something that's better, towards something that works for us all. It's about understanding the link between social injustice and climate change, looking at how those who are marginalized bear the brunt of the climate crisis disproportionately. The historic legacy of colonialism has resulted in the decreased economic capacity of the global south, meaning that their ability to deal with the climate crisis which we've disproportionately, in the UK and other global North countries, have disproportionately contributed to, is stunted. Climate justice means that we fix this. It's about making up for the disasters of the past whilst building the way towards a better future. Whether that's tackling homelessness, ending poverty, or providing debt-free climate resilience technologies to the countries that need it the most, Climate justice is the notion under which we bridge inequality through justice, ensuring that everyone is as well equipped as possible to deal with the now inevitable impacts of the climate crisis. I don't think you need to be a naturalist to care about the climate crisis, or even to be a climate justice activist. As the clock to total devastation keeps on ticking, it's time to break business as usual and do things that aren't usually expected of us. We need to turn our apathy into action. And the main way we can do that is to understand the boundless extent of our own agency and power. Whether that's through protesting, speaking out on social media, lobbying politicians, or making changes at your workplace, speaking to colleagues, educating yourself, there's no limit to what we can do. It's time to put an end to handing out tax breaks to fossil fuel corporations, and it's time to stop fueling a profit-driven crisis through legislation that centers on corporate greed and devalues both people, unless they're billionaires, and the planet. But only we can, do, we can only do this with your help. If we really want to tackle the climate crisis, there's no shortage of things that we can do. The policy is already written up and the technology exists. It's all just waiting to be implemented. We just need to get our governments to put it into place. And our collective power means that that should be really easy. Through collective action, we can achieve all of this and more. So get on the streets, get writing to your local representatives and get caring for your community. That's how we win the path to change. We need to ensure that this fight remains internationalist and intersectional, unbound by borders, for there is no justice if that justice isn't global. Change is not just a necessity, it's an inevitability that we can build together.
We're not asking for the world. We're just trying to save it. And we need you to join us. Thank you.